Hello, crafty friends. This is the Paper Chef here. Welcome to part three of my Cup of Tea workshop series. In this series, we work with the bundle called the Cup of Tea Bundle. It includes the stamp set and these teacup dies. Today we'll be doing a sticky note, sticky note holder project, and we're going to be using these teacup dies and some adhesive sheets. We'll be cutting scoring. We'll talk about the designer series paper and I'll show you that. Okay, and just doing a little bit of inking up. We'll probably use a different shape for the sentiment, the one that's in your actual like, teacup dies. And this is just my sample here. Okay, so I'm going to open this up and then I'm going to show you who inspired me and the project. So we're going to be using in colors, in, co in color cardstock, some of the in colors. I have secured mine with Velcro and I'm going to show you another way to secure it as well. So shout out to my team member, Jean. Jean, and I, I'm not, I hope she doesn't mind me saying her last name, Talamelli. Okay, she got into the Paper Chefs group and did the team challenge. She went on the, we have a Facebook group for the Paper Chefs, which is my team. We're called the Paper Chefs, plural, because I'm the Paper Chef. And one of the things we do is the tech challenge each month. And my team members can do different videos for their tech challenge. And she did a tutorial for us on creating sticky note holders. And she even wrote me a cute little note inside there. Okay, she made 15 of these for her coworkers. So that was really awesome. And she does little gifts and she sent me this one with the piggy and look at the size of her sticky notes, which is awesome, right? The big pack. I didn't have that big pack to make these with, but I left enough room. I used her measurements and left enough room, you see. So I'll show you the sticky notes I'm using and then I left enough room if I'm using a big pack. Pretty much standard sticky note size holder. Now even her things match as well. And I like her little made just for you stamp. So her things match as well, like her designer series. This is in color designer series paper. And then she put the piggy on it, but I could have easily put like a little teacup on that. So that's her sample. That's what I'm going for. I'm gonna use her measurements, everything. So I thank my team members for helping me when I have a lot of projects to do in a series. They get like, this is, they're actually helping me with my cup of tea bingo as well and creating some things. Okay, so let's take the um, trimmer first and we'll start with that. We'll do the trimming part, we'll do this cardstock part, and we'll do the, um, we'll do the inking, we'll do the inking last, like any stamping. And let me see, I have this out here just to show you this. I show this every, every time. At the end of this video, I'll show you what we created in parts one and two, the cards I created, uh, T, what is it called? The nail file box, which I've been making for years. We did a diaper fold tree pouch. This is the tea boutique. This is available now in the annual catalog. The link to my store is in the description of this video. Just click on the little thing at the bottom of the YouTube channel and it, it opens up what's called a description. So just click, there's like a little arrow or something. Maybe some of you can, can say what it's called. I don't know what it's called. You, you click that, it opens up a description and there's links. There's links to the, some of the materials you can get like on Amazon, like the, see how she used the little magnets and I used Velcro. I linked to those, those sizes and things. And I linked to my store where you can get this tea boutique, designer series paper, cup of tea bundle. Okay. The entire suite, including the cards and envelopes, designer series paper, stamp set and dies is 67, but you can get the tea boutique suite items separately at my store. Okay. Now, wait, let me, let me get to the trimmer part. We get the cardstock. Let's get everything we need. So we've already done one with Parakeet Party. So let's do one with, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is Parakeet Party. Well, let's see if we can do uh, a different color. So every time I do something, just kind of mix and match. Like you can do it too. Let's do a, let's do a sweet sorbet and a starry sky. Okay. So you, you basically have all these ink colors in your pack. Uh, if you got the kit, I mean, you have Tahitian Tide, Sweet Sorbet, Starry Sky, Orchid, this is Orchid Oasis, Starry Sky, and Parakeet Party. Anytime I show you how to make cards or projects using cardstock, just, you can use either one, use them interchangeably. So let's see, let's get a little flat surface here and do this. So we're going to make the cardstock eight inches wide. Well, it's already eight and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and open this arm up, right? So it's eight and a half by 11. So let's go for eight inches wide. Meaning all we then need to do is take a half an inch off the cardstock, right? 
Okay, save these little strips for later. I'm going to turn the cardstock. I'm cutting two at once. Two is okay, if, only because I have a new blade. I normally wouldn't do two. Okay, let me put these up here like that so that you can see. I don't do usually two at a time cardstock. I usually just do one at a time cardstock, three at a time designer series paper. But this is a brand new blade, so it'll work. After your blade starts getting dull, it doesn't work anymore. Okay, three and a quarter. So you can actually do sixteenths of an inch with this this paper trimmer, but I'm just doing three and a quarter. Okay, so we're going to go like that. All right, I think I'll make, I don't know, I think I'm going to make a couple of these. Just go ahead and make them, right? These are going to make good gifts, and I also give away everything I make in my series, at least one of everything. And I think I'm going to go see one of my friends soon, today or tomorrow. One of my team members who's in the area. So I think I'm just gonna just gonna make extras. Give us gifts. Alright, so let's see. So we made I had two pieces of cardstock, so you can make three out of one piece of cardstock, right? Awesome. Now you can, if you have a paper at the Stampin' Up trimmer, you can use the scoring tool on your trimmer. Okay, I have the scoring here to, to attach. Scoring tool to attach to tell you about that. However, I don't like to score that way. I just don't. It's just not my style. I like to use, I mean, you can use whatever you're comfortable with and use whatever tools you have, right? I like to use what's called the Simply Score tool. This is a tool I'm always demonstrating and I always say, hey, get this in your starter kit. Or, you know, you don't have to get it in your starter kit, but it's a tool that everybody needs. I, it has a little stylus and I just like to turn my paper and score it that way. So let's go ahead and lay it that way. And I'm going to do one at a time and then, you know, we could do two at a time right here, but I'll do two at a time after I show you the one at a time. All right, so we're going to score, and I will. Ha I have these measurements already written for you, so I can like zoom into them. So we're going to score at two, and I'm let's use. I'm going to use the small side. I should use the small side. Two and three eighths. Now these bigger, these bigger lines are the three are the eighths. Two, three. Like they're not really bigger. They're big and short. Two and two and three eighths. Okay, and then we have five and a half. Okay, five and a half. Five and seven eighths. All right. See that? All right. While I'm burnishing, I'll put the measurements there for you. Now I'm going to go ahead and do two at once so you can see that. And I'll say it again. So two. And then we have one, two, three eighths, right? Two and three eighths. Okay, and then we have five and a half. I'm doing two at once. One, right up to seven eighths, right before the, right before the six. All right, so now, um, let me go ahead and take, what I'm gonna do is take this little scissors here I printed this really small. I probably should have printed it in bigger font. But I, I use what's called the notepad. So let's see if we can. So while I'm, while I'm like burnishing, right, these are the measurements. So like I'll zoom in there so you can see that. And then while I'm doing my little thing with my phone folder, you can write down the measurements. And that we're going to do DSP. That's designer series paper. Okay, that'll be like the, the little things that we put here. So that's, this is the size of these little panels. This panel and that panel. Okay. That's what DSP means, designer series paper. Those of you that are new, new to stamping up, that's what that means. So I'm just gonna burnish all the edges. And the nice little thing about this gift is you could bring these to craft fairs. This is a good little craft fair item. And you know, sell them. You can give them as little gifts and you can use them for any holiday. And there's so many other nice things about this, like you can refill it. It's a sticky note holder, it can be refilled. You can give it to, as random acts of kindness, to like your waiter, waitress, um, you know, your security guard. They're always taking notes, like just, you can just randomly give them out. You can keep them in your purse for your notes. You can make them for any theme.
Okay, I'm going to zoom back out. I think you had enough time to write that down so you can see how I'm burnishing the edges here. Okay, so the top of the part is a little bit shorter. Well, it's going to overlap. All right. Now we'll we'll know we'll know which is the top before we assemble it because we're gonna take the shorter piece of paper so we're actually gonna know that way. I'll do these ones later because you get the idea. And now I'm gonna grab out my trimmer. I'm gonna cut the DSP and I'll show you the DSP. So I want to show you the T Boutique Designer Series paper. I've already cut a lot of pieces of this, but I'll show you. So it's a twelve. It comes in six by six pieces, six by six, and you get all these different designs. You get 12 different designs. Okay, I'm just taking my extras I haven't used yet and pulling them out. I'm get, that way I'll have three of each left over. Although I don't have any more kits right now, I might have like parts of a kit. The next time I offer my designer series, oop, there's only two of those. Next time I offer my designer series paper share, I might let, I might have my extra kits or extra parts of kits for sale in the form of my mystery craft surprises because I don't really have yeah, I've already used that one. Super cute patterns. I'm not going over all the... Oh, I have a lot of those because we use those for the nail file box. I'm not going over all the coordinating colors at this point, but suffice it to say, all of the in colors are coordinating colors. Plus a couple extra colors. So there you go. Super cute little patterns. So for this, the smaller the pattern, the better. I'm just going to pull out my scraps and use the scraps. The smaller patterns are better for this little sticky note so you can see them. Okay, I should already have some. Oops, that one's not. Let's see. Some already cut to the right size. So DSP is going to be three and an eighth. Three and an eighth. Okay, that's not the piece. <laughs> this might be the piece. Three and one eighth. Oh, yeah, it's already three and one eighth by times two. Okay, so times two. Okay, three and an eighth times two. And then you, and then you have, some of them are going to be one and seven eighths. Now, that's it here. The smaller ones to the top, and the big, the smaller ones to the top, the bigger ones to the bottom. I'll try doing some, seeing which ones look. You just kind of mix and match. So if you're trying to figure out here, that's the top, right? That's the top because. It's the shorter piece, the one, one and seven eighths piece. Let's see. I mean, it has an eighth of an inch around the outside. Okay, there you go. Cute. I think I'm gonna do this one for the contrast of it. Now you can use your, your tear and tape. I'm gonna use my Seal Plus adhesive. So you can use your, you know, use your glue rolling adhesive tear and tape, it doesn't matter. Let's put that right there. Yippee. Okay, let's see what we have here. That piece is a two inch piece. I'm just seeing if it will go. Nope, maybe that's not one of the ones I cut yet. Let's see, might be, these are the ones I cut. Here we go. Yep, this one, this is the one. Look at, look at how I picked that because of the cute little teapots. So that when they lift it up, they'll see these cute little teapots. So that's a two inch piece. And it's perfect because I'm covering up the teapots just a little bit, but when they open it up, they're going to see the whole pretty little teapots. Yay! So kind of decide where the patterns are on your paper when you put them there. And I thought I made a bunch of these earlier, like the little... Just laying it flat to do the adhesive. Cut a bunch of extras earlier. All right, let's see. Where did I put them? Okay, this was for my teapot. 
We'll use, we can use that for my teapot. Let's see what this, this little piece. Let's see what this is. This is a two inch. Hmm, got a little wonky there. Two inch. Yeah, sometimes my trimmer is a little wonky. By three and an eighth, let's see. Perfect, so I'll use this one for the bottom of one of these. Use. Okay. That, that side's cute too, actually. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for the solid side on this one. I mean, this, pa this paper is so cute on both sides. You kind of, it's like hard to decide which, which one to use all the time. Glue is a little more forgiving, so you can do, move the panel around easier. All right, so for that side, now we need a one. Yep, that's another two inch piece. So we'll save that. So I need another, I need a one and seven eighths piece. Let's see what this is. This might be a two inch piece. There we go, perfect. So if you're gonna use solid on one side, I'm gonna make the shorter side the top. If you're gonna use solid on one side, Oh wait, let's see, that is the shorter side. That is the top. Okay, the shorter side is the top. Then you're gonna use, see, the pattern on the other side, just for kind of, just for going. Like I wouldn't wanna do this and that. I want the little teapot showing at least someplace. Just keeping in mind which way is the right, which way is the top and which way is the bottom. I guess it really don't matter if you don't have the long side. I just, I think, oh yeah, I guess it does matter. You want the short side on the top, just like an envelope, that way, You know, it covers over like that. Oh, it's coming together cute. I like this. All right, so that's that one's done. And so much for all my little scraps. Let's see what this one was. This one was a one and seven eighth one. Here, we'll put that, that one goes right there. Perfect. I'll take a picture of these when they're all done and you can just kind of use the patterns. And if you like, like them, just Duplicate them. And if you've already followed along with my tutorials and are already out of a pack of paper, go ahead and get another pack. 48 sheets. You can make all kinds of projects, just duplicate. All right, now, we're gonna take our little sticky notes. See how many I have here. I might only have two packs of those, but we'll take whatever we have and we'll make those into, we'll attach those while we're here with the, stick, with the adhesive. I'm using a World of Color post-it notes. I only have one pack of these kind. That's, these are like the shorter ones, I think, like that. See, they're not as thick as the one that Jean used for her sample. She used the big, regular pack. I think I have another, I know another pack as well. And if it doesn't match, I'll just go get some more. Let's see. This, this kind is not from the World of Color, but still post-it notes. I leave this little back piece on there, right? Just like that for Post-it brand. And I just, I just do this. You know, I just put some adhesive on the back sheet there. All right, which one am I gonna use that one for? This one would be cute, I think, contrasted with that. Let's see this one. Yeah, we'll put this one inside the red one. The sweet sorbet, not red. There's a little bit of it, like a quarter of an inch on each, on each side. Love it. Okay. And then we'll do, you just got to make sure you just waste the top. Do this one on that one. What happened to my paper on that one? I thought I had completed that. I must have forgot to adhere the paper on that one. Okay, this one. Now we're ready to do our die cutting and then our stamping. So even though it's a little bit thinner than a regular pack of sticky notes, I'm leaving a little bit of room there so they can replace it with a bigger, a bigger one. Hmm. What happened here? 
This was the one, but now I gotta cut it shorter. After casting my trimmer aside, we need it back again. Need the trimmer back again. Thank you, I'm glad you love this project, Diana. I'll say hi to you guys in a moment. Kind of can't walk and chew gum here with this kind of project. Okay, one and seven eighths. I don't know how that happened, but I did, I did make, I do need a piece for that one. I mean, I just forgot to adhere it. So it's okay to make a bunch of pieces that are two inch by three. So what you could do is make a bunch of pieces by two by three and an eighth. Decide where to use them later and just cut off an eighth of an inch later, like I just did. So once you decide where to use them, it's better to cut them bigger than smaller. And then once you decide where to use them, use them you can trim some of them down to one and seven eighths. All righty. Got my pieces, got that. Now we need these little teacups. I have to look at my own project to see how I did it. So for teacups, I'm gonna use some, I'm gonna use the back. Like for this one, I'll use the back. I'll make the back in the sweet sorbet. And then for this one, this maybe for this one, I can make the back like this color, right? So for that, and then for this one, maybe I can make the back this color or some other solid color, like some solid color that contrasts. Maybe, mm, that might be a little bit tacky. So maybe something like this. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take, we're gonna make three little teacups. So now we're just taking, we're just getting some, some paper here and we're just cutting it for the teacups, okay? This little pieces of scraps. I don't think I should cut three teacups at once, but maybe two. Here, actually, we'll need another, we'll do, we'll make four teacups. Right, but I have two, I'm gonna make two at a time. I don't wanna make more than two at a time. So now let's just go ahead and put my, my little mini stamp and cut and emboss machine up here. I'll raise this up a little. Oh, I'm already getting spammers. Ah, oh, we can't go one day without spammers. All right, not your fault, but thank you. I know you guys are gonna be reporting those. Alrighty, let's, we need the little teacup dies. I put them all back just so I wouldn't lose them because I'm always losing things in my videos. We're gonna do the solid one first. We don't need adhesive sheets for this. We're gonna be using adhesive sheets in this video, but let's not right now. The solid one is just for the back. So the sandwich is for the mini cut and emboss machine. Plate number one, and then that's very easy. You just need plate, plate number two and then another plate number two. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this around though so you don't have to, I don't have to cross over. That way I can use the handle on that side. All right, so this is the one I'm, I just used new cutting plates so they wouldn't warp. I've had issues where sometimes in my videos my cutting plates warp. Mm. So all I'm doing is that, sticking that down. And if you want, you can add your little hearts and things right from the dies like this. Well, and we'll just add one heart just for good measure. Just take a heart, stick it on there, okay? And that's when you, while you're cutting your, your scraps up, use up your extra little scraps for your hearts and things. Okay, a plate number two. You don't need any tape on this because they're gonna be far enough away from each other they don't slip into each other, hopefully. And then I'm just gonna roll this through. You hear a little cracking noise and that's okay. I staggered the plates a little bit so they, it helps grab them because this is a mini cut and emboss machine. It doesn't have as many options, but you want to like see how I staggered the plates. You need to stagger the plates at the beginning when you're using your mini cut and emboss machine so that it, they can grab onto something. Alrighty, we have our, let's throw that over there. Extra scraps. We have our little teacups we need. Okay, beautiful. We'll do that one more time. Put that there. I don't know where the little hearts went. There's, a, there's one heart. There they are. There's my hearts. We're gonna need them for the little tea bag and there's another cup. Gonna go ahead and cut two more. That way I have options, right? I need, I cut two more so I have options of where to like put things. Oh, like that doesn't contrast with that paper. Like it's better to have extra pieces for options. Design options is what I'm talking about. Cause you wanna have contrasting colors when you're cutting things. Oops, make sure your heart is way away from the cup or it'll It can get caught on, caught up under, you don't want the dies to get caught up under each other. Okay, 
And now we're gonna now we're gonna use adhesive sheets. So we have the cups, all the cups we need. I'm gonna put this little guy back. And we need this guy for later for stamping, possibly, unless I already have those in my bucket of crafty goodness. We need that. We need, hmm, we're gonna need a couple of these as well. Okay, and I think that's all. So we're gonna put, but I can put this one back because I'm done with this one. And I really need like a magnetic sheet or bowl to put all these in. Okay, putting this little teacup back. All right, so now we have our little teacups. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my spout. All right, we're gonna take this and some extra DSP. So now we're gonna take, and that's not my, oh, I do have some little lemons already cut. Let me get some adhesive sheets. So what you want now is you wanna take adhesive sheets. These are, these come, you have in your kit, a six by six sheet that I included, adhesive sheets. Right here. Item number 152334. These are on my website. 152334. They come in 12 by 12 sheets. I'm just going to go and take out a bunch in case. I'm not sure how much we'll need. So what, we, what we're going to do now is find some design series paper to contrast with. This one will be good because look, it'll go nice on top of this one, right? Like a contrasting color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the adhesive sheet like this. It's double-sided, okay? And I'm going to slap it on the back of the paper, like that, like so. Okay, that's all. Very simple. Now, there's still adhesive on this side of the adhesive sheet because it's double-sided. So I can peel this off and make a sticker. That's the idea. We're making our own stickers. So now we're just going to put the little teapot on top of this section. Of course, it's the mini machine, so of course, cut this little... Piece to fit in there so there we go okay now we're just going to lay it right there now you may recall last summer i had a very hard time with the stickers with this machine but that's because my plates were not new this time i'm using new plates when i tried to make stickers with the butterflies last summer oh boy i was like i almost broke my machine in half because my plates were all worked so it's good to get new plates they're not very expensive get new plates once in a while and this this little mini machine will work like a dream when you get new plates all right there you go so what we've done is we make a sticker. Now watch the magic. This is so awesome. This is just so, such a great thing. Throwing the scraps away. So we have this sticker material on the back. And we could, we could try to poke out all the little bits, but I just find it's easier when I take the sticker off, the little bits come out anyway. Let's get rid of my junky scissors and let's try my small scissors. So poke out, poke out the shape like this. Just get it to come out. You just got to poke it out one of these little holes. Okay, so there it is, this beautiful shape. But you have these little pieces stuck in your shape. But when you, beauty of making a sticker, as opposed to just not making a sticker and trying to use glue and glue oozes out all over inside, then it makes these funky little lines. When you use a sticker, you don't have any glue residue. And look at all these little bits that come out. Look at how the bits come out when you make your sticker. Isn't that awesome? So now all I'm left with is like a couple of little bits. Like there's one here. Look, very small. There's one. I think, let me see if I got them all. Okay. I have some strange lighting going on here, but let's put the lighting closer. Okay, got them all. So that's much easier than trying to deal with glue, glue oozing out. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this layer and I'm just kind of holding it there with my hand here. This goes perfectly on this cup. You can't beat having awesome dies like this. So well done stamping up for this little design. I love me a layered teacup. Okay, how cool is that? So you, now you got your sticker, so rub it, rub it to get your sticker to stay. So now this part we're putting uh, dimensionals on. That other part is what we need the sticker on. All right, let's find another little piece to do one mark so we can at least finish the two. Let's find like a, no, let's say this is our cup pot. 
that's our teapot. So we'll see. Okay, let's see. We're going to we're going to just kind of test now. We got to test where we're at here. Can't use this teapot teacup on this one because there's no contrast. Right? No contrast. You can use it on this one because it contrasts really well. So that one will be for that sticky note holder. So now this one will be for that sticky note holder. Oops. Nope, we can't do that because that's the top. Okay, let's see. This one Huh, maybe not now that's that that way. Maybe this one will be for that sticky note holder. Yeah, this one. With some of this color paper, maybe. Um, I'm just seeing, I want, I want something like as dark as possible. So looking for, maybe that would be cute too. I don't know, we're gonna try it. We shall try it, see how it works. Now I really should have put the adhesive on before I cut this piece. I, I don't know how, I just had all that adhesive out and I've already, oh there it goes, there it goes. It's like where'd it happen to it? It's like already gone. All right, so you want to get the adhesive. Usually you would cut these together so that you can, you know, get these the little adhesive sheets to adhere to each other, but in the right. Now I will trim off the little extra designer series paper before I run this through the machine so I don't get my plates all gunked up. You'll see what I mean. Okay, that's the sticky side, okay? So now you're going to take your paper and just plunk it, plunk it down on top of it. Like, like so, and then make sure you get your teacup like that, and then, oh my goodness, talk about not being able to cut anything straight here. Okay, something like that. But what I need to do is trim off some excess, or I'm going to get some gunk inside my machine here. I don't want that extra adhesive going through. Okay, perfect. Teacup. Hopefully this contrasts enough. If not, I use maybe a red cup behind it. Okay. Voila, magic. Perfect. Look how cool that is. And where's my teacup? Right down here. Ooh la la. I like it. I think it's going to contrast well. I'm lay this. It's easier when you're like sitting and watching TV and you can just do this other stuff during watching TV. Not the die cutting part. I'm talking about like assembling all your little pieces. Now, what I think is so brilliant about this die is usually you can't get the cutouts in the middle because you lose the pieces, but look how they designed it. So the little, this little leaf touches the handle. So it all came out in one piece. I just love that about the die. I guess I'll show you on here what I mean is look, look at this fused together, the metal fused together. So now I can peel this all off in one piece, which is so nice. Because using dies with like multiple pieces is a pain. Like trying to get, if, if there was a separate handle, if there was a separate die for this handle, we'd be like in die cutting hell. All right. So anyway, now let's get like that and see how that's going to look. Oh, yes. Perfect. Okay. So now we, hit, now we need our little, we, I think I have lemon slices in my bucket of crafty goodness already. But I mean, just, I guess I could teach you how to do it just because I like to make my tutorials independent of each other. So let's put down the little mat here for stamping. This is a little, this is a little foam mat because you can't stamp on your scoreboard. And you're simply scored. So now take a little piece of white paper. I was cutting out witches hats. If you missed my tutorial on witches hats, or actually it wasn't really a tutorial, it was an unboxing. 
If you missed my unboxing, please check out my unboxing. I've done a couple unboxings of the new items from the new holiday catalog. And so that that's where it's really, really fun. All right, so these, let's see, these I can just kind of cut the way they are like that, but we need maybe a lemon slice. We need the word enjoy, and then we can kind of cut around it like that. And there's also in the stamp set a little thing that you could put, one of my team members, Linda, she likes to put the little border around it. I haven't even used that little border yet. So let's try to use the little border, see what that looks like. And we'll see what we can fit in it. We got enjoy. We have, see here, there's little tiny things to put in it. It's time for tea would be cute. It's time for tea would fit in there. Let's see, that's this one. And enjoy would look good. And what's that one? Sweet, I used that one already, sweet. And then we could do our little lemon slice with our crushed curry. So let's see what we have here. Let's take Starry Sky. That's a dark color. We'll get our little stamping blocks from wherever they are, here, over here. And we'll put this one, oops, got to put it flat side up. So flat side up. Let's just stamp over here on our scrap paper. Okay, good. Okay, we're going to put a few of those. Oops. <laughs> I got double vision. That one's, that one's, okay. Just doing a few of those. Good enough. We have enough for choices. Okay, let's take another color. We'll do, it's, we'll do sweet sorbet. It's pretty dark color. I'm just gonna close this for a second. Just wanna get stuff everywhere. Let's stick this one flat side up. Just grabbing another, I'm just grabbing another stamping block here so I don't have to worry about the ink. It's time for tea. So we're gonna go, oops, got a little hitchhiker on there. Time for tea. Okay. That works. Oh yeah. That's going to look nice. So we'll just do a few of those. I'm using a sponge to stamp on. If you're wondering, how is this coming, coming out good? Because there's a sponge there. All right, good. And we'll do a couple of the enjoys. I'm just slapping that on there. That way we can decide which one we want to use. And then I'm going to grab, go back and grab that other because I, I need to put the outside of it. So I do need to open the Starry Sky again. <laughs> okay, note to self, do the outside first so you can actually see what you're doing. I can't believe I got those centered. I can't even see through the stamp because there's so much ink on there. All right, but it worked. The stamping, the stamping uh, fairies are helping me. All right, so now we're gonna take the crushed curry. We'll do a little lime or lemon, lemon slice right here. We're just, we're just gonna stick the, stick the lemon flat side up on the back of that. You just sort of see through it. See what I'm doing? Sort of see through it. And then you're like, uh, Paper Chef, I can't see your measurements anymore there. You keep stamping over your piece of scrap paper. All right, that's good though. That lemon slice came out nice. Put that right there. So why crush carry? Because it's one of the, oops, I just smeared, no, I didn't smear it. One of the coordinating colors for the sweet. That's why I'm using crush carry. I'm doing these far enough away so that the dyes don't roll on top of each other. Okay, it's very important. All right, let's take a look at my, let's take a look at this and see if there's anything else I need. We have our lemon slice. We have already made our cups. We have the little enjoy, but we're going to use that shape for the little enjoy. And we're going to make these in blank. We're just going to make those blank. And we're going to color them with a little marker. All right, so now we're ready to run it through the machine. This time I would say washi tape is a good thing to have. 
because this time it matters, right? So washi tape is important when it matters. When it matters, meaning, open. Oh, let's pull out these two because we're going to use those later. The, we're going to use these um, foam adhesive. When, when it matters that you don't want things to slip around, then you want to use washi tape. Okay, put that right there. Grab it. Mm -hmm. Plate number two. Put that down. It's time for tea. Right, like that. You need washi tape because it, it'll slip otherwise, and then the dye won't matter. Okay, come on, washi tape. You can use low tack tape or sticky notes too, but washi tape is easy to use because it's not very sticky and it doesn't mess up your cardstock. Okay, like that. Okay, we'll put one. We'll put one on the other side for good measure. All right, and then we need. This is just gonna. You're gonna take your blank area anywhere in the blank area, like there. You just need like a white one of those, and then we need our little lemon slice. That there. I should have extra lemon slices in my little bag. And I probably even have extra, it's time for tea, but I'm just gonna make two of these because we're making two projects. Actually, let's move that over there so we don't have to worry about it. We'll put it there. Okay, good. Roll it through. The longer you let these dry, the less chance that you have of these smearing around. Oh yes, came out cute. So I do like it with the little line on it. I just had him play with the line, so that's cool. Okay, put the little lemon slice, little white piece. And now we're gonna do this again. Put that there. It's time for tea. Lemons. You can do like a whole bunch of stuff at once. Okay, I had a little die cutting avalanche and then we'll stick that up in there in that white spot. All right, ready for assembly. We just need to color in the little, the little bits. So for these, I just used my blend marker. That's how I got this little color that was cute. And we could use whatever color is gonna be behind it too. We don't have to use the lemon. So we could just see how it looks. Or that, is it called, no, not lemon, parakeet party. Just gonna reach for the blends. I, I think that'll work for the color, regardless of the where the cup is. Yeah, so that'll look cute like on there. See, I just couldn't really put like the white piece on there like that. It just didn't contrast, which is why I'm coloring it with the with the blends. So you just go like that. Let's put a little piece of scrap under it. So it doesn't get all over my cutting, my mat, my sponge. Okay, so stick that there. And you're just coloring it with one of your coordinating colors. In this case, parakeet party. I keep wanting to call it lemon lime twist. We had this color that retired a few years ago and it was called lemon lime twist and it looks like so much like this. It was like perfect for making limes. Okay, so now we need, we'll keep that over there. We need, to just assemble. So we need our little, these ones, the dimensionals. So let's put, let's go like this. Oops, no, it's gonna go over here. And you want like the cup to sort of, oops, let me, let me zoom out, let me zoom back up. So you want the little cup to sort of hang off the bottom a little bit maybe. You can do it like that. So I did it over there. 
I did it this way to get the cup handle to be in the white part so I could also tilt it like that. Oh, that would look cute. I think I'll do it like that. Tilt it so the little pink part's in the handle. Okay, so in that case, I'm just gonna sort of put the little, these on it, but don't put them, don't put any adhesive on this little part that's gonna hang off the bottom, right? So something like that. And then I'm gonna put like the, the little, it's time for tea. I think I might put that down the bottom. It's time for tea. So we'll just, stick, we'll just go ahead and stick that at the bottom. Okay, something like that. Now, but I wanna put this little, this little guy hanging off the edge, right? So for that, I wanna put the little, the little twine, get a little piece of twine. And so before you start adhering things, just get your little twine in there and adhere it like that, see, with the, with the rolling adhesive. And if you really wanna make sure it stays, like you could put another piece of, like right on top, another little piece of extra foam dimensional right on top, just to make sure that that twine stays there. All right, so it's gonna go like that. Um, something like that with the little handle being in the, in the pink part. Oops. I don't wanna get it in the way of it's time for tea. All right, two for tea. Two for T. Okay, now we're gonna go like, see where this is gonna land. Maybe a little, and the twine is in your kit, by the way. So go in your kit and look for your twine. You all got some twine in your kit. I tried to give you everything you could possibly need, but of course I didn't give you sticky notes this time because you got your little nail file and some extra stuff, but I'm gonna put the twine like that with a little piece of adhesive and then I'm gonna Put a foam dimensional behind it, a piece of a foam dimensional. A whole foam dimensional might be too big. Oh, so cute, and where can I put it? Right, I don't wanna mess with that teacup. Kinda of like down there, like that. See, cute. And we're gonna put a little sticker on that too. All right, we'll do the adhering at the end. I'm happy so far. We gotta put a little slice of lemon. So for the little slice of lemon, I just sliced it down the middle like that. I put a little slice. Then I put some dimensional, I put a little dimensional behind it. Okay, so I sliced it down the middle and I stuck it like, oops. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of some of the white part because I wasn't really centered when I die cut it. Sometimes if you're a little off center, there's like a little too much white on one side. This is why we use our scan and cut and die cuts. We can never do it as smooth ourselves. I don't know anybody that can. All right, so anyway, there's a little, there's a little slice in the middle of the lemon so that way it kind of sticks over the cup like that. See? Oh, fun. That's what I did here, I cut the little lemon. All right, one down. We still need a sticker on there, and the sticker is from these little, well, you can, you can use like a glue dot or something. Oh, not a glue dot. You could do one, one of the in-color dots, or you could do these little stickers from a different suite. We'll see if I can find the stickers. A lot has happened since I started this tutorial. Don't even know where the stickers are. My bucket of... We'll just see what we can put on it for my bucket of crafty goodness. Okay. Nope. Not the right color match. Oh, you know what would be adorable? Is a butterfly. This is what I used earlier. One of these stickers is like fun flowers with some shapes. But you know what would be adorable is a little butterfly. So we'll see if I have butterflies in my little bucket of crafty goodness. And you have some butterflies in your kits. Yes, I do. I do, I do. So fun. I'm just kind of like ransacking some of my, my little kits that I, little embellishments I have for kits. See if a butterfly will fit on there. Where'd it go? Here. Oops. 
The little stickers come off of these a lot. Stick it there. Get on there. Hmm. You can't see that, but there's a, there's an actual, when they made these brushed brass butterflies, they made these little things, stickers right behind them. There they go. They're the exact size of the butterfly. Sometimes you pull them off and they don't come with it. Oh yes, I love that. So I'm putting a butterfly on the little tea bag holder. This, there's little details, little fun details, right? So we're gonna find, it's time for tea, might end up going up in here somewhere for this one because this is the plain part. I'm just looking for the cup we made. Where is my cup? Like I said, a lot has happened, but now I lost my cup. Here it is. Maybe this is my cup. Here's my cup. We can do the little, these are for, these extra hearts are for the inside of our sticky notes. We're going to attach those with a glue dot. And we're still doing the attachment with the magnet too. So we're not done yet. Almost done, but we're not done. We've got to do this. And then you're getting to see kind of how I, that would look okay down there. But I think it might look okay up the top too. So this one again, we're just gonna put a little bit of adhesive there. The little piece of twine. The little that's gonna be too big, but you see what I'm saying? I'm just gonna cut it so it's hidden. Okay. So I'm gonna put that little piece down, maybe down there. A piece of twine. Oh yeah, looks cool. Putting some dimensionals right on top there. So that way the twine doesn't slip off, right? Got this little piece sticking out. Okay, and that's to another butterfly because I'm liking the butterfly look. Okay, and now this one, I'm thinking we need to do something with it. I don't know because it doesn't contrast. So maybe up there. It needs to go up there. You see what I mean? Like it doesn't look right on the white part. I think it doesn't look right on the white part. I'm always trying to contrast things. Either that or I was going to color it, but then I thought if I color it, I could easily smear it. We don't want to smear it. See, I'm doing this one a lot quicker. You know, a little bit of, put a dimensional back there. It, once you do a bunch of these, they'll, be, they'll go quicker. Like, you're going to cut out all your limes or all your lemon slices at once. You're going to cut out all your teacups at once, right? All the little parts, all the little details. Ooh, fun. Okay, now we're going to take our glue dots, and we're going to adhere the little hearts to the inside of the sticky note holder. So, looking for glue dots. Okay, so he's gonna put a, I'm gonna open this up, stick a heart right there. Cute, right? And I already have a glue dot on my hand. So we'll just use that glue dot, fill on my hand. And we're gonna put a, a heart on the other one that we just made. Or you could put a note inside, of course. That would look cute. Okay. Now we need to adhere these. Now I don't have the magnets that are in the description of this video that that Jean used for hers. She told me she used magnets and she put glue, she held the magnets on with glue dots. And I love that idea. Love it, love it. But I just didn't have any cute little magnets like that. 
So use those and use the link in my description. It helps support my channel when you use those links and you can just use glue dots. But I have Velcro because I use Velcro for when I make my homemade envelopes. So I'm gonna use Velcro. These are little Velcro uh, shapes. So what you're gonna do is adhere them together. So first put one, I put the clear one on the bottom and the fuzzy one on the top. So what I do first is I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take this clear, the clear one and I'm gonna make sure this is hidden. But don't go making it tight like this. Don't go shutting it tight because then you can't fit a big sticky note holder. So make sure you have a room for the sticky note holder. And I'm just gonna make sure it's hidden under there. Like put that up there like that, the dot. And then I'm gonna take the fuzzy side and I'm gonna take the fuzzy side and keep, put the sticker side up. I'll do it slowly for the next one. Sticker side up like that. Kind of let this flow. Make sure the sides are flush. Make sure, like that. Push down. And voila. We have a little room there if we want to put a bigger sticky note holder. And we have a cute little clear, clear way to fasten it. Okay, we'll do this one. We're going to take the clear side. These are clear. This one's not clear. This one's clear, the bottom one. So we're going to take the clear one. Well, I mean, as clear as Velcro can be, right? As clear as Velcro can be. Put it up near the top so it's hidden under that flap. Okay, take your circle, your fuzzy side. Put your fuzzy side with the sticker side up. Stick your fuzzy side on it. Now you're left with a sticker. Now these can perfectly line up because you're lining them up, right? And the stickers will line up. Once your, once your sticky note holder has a little way to push it down, push it, and then voila. Okay, you can also write yourself, like you can write notes inside there. I mean, you could put a gift card inside here. You could, you could add another little thing of ribbon or twine around it. And here are all our examples. Here's the one I made earlier. Here's the one. Here's the one I made earlier with the little circle. I used some kind of die. I think it's called the new Stylish Shapes dies or something for that one. I did color it. I used the little flower and I used that. And then um, this is the one that Jean made with the little, this, this is called This Birthday Piggy. I should have mentioned This Birthday Piggy. Go to your happy place and stay there all day with in color designer series paper that she used. And there are the ones we just made. And I hope some of you were crafting along with me. Before I show you the projects from part, well, parts one and two, I'd like to just jump on and say, hello. Here's an extra heart. I'm gonna go ahead and put that heart on that, on that side for good measure. Where's my glue dots? Because I have extra hearts floating around. Stick a heart right on there. I think that would be cute. This one could also put a little heart on it. Sticky note holder ideas and use, you know, use this idea for your stocking stuffers or whatever you may be making. And right after this, since my table is a complete and utter mess, I'm definitely going to make some more of these because I'm already, I'm already at the point where, you know, I have, I've already done all this stuff. So I might as well make some more of these. All right. So let's see. We have here today with us, Janet. Hello, Janet, Diana, Anne. Kathy from California, Linda. Linda was the one I was telling you about who usually puts the little borders around her time for tea, so I did that. Thank you, Linda. Reminding me that there's a little extra shape there I wasn't using. These ones are too hard to put something around the edge of because they're so small, but the bigger ones look cute like that. All right, let's see, where am I? Diana, okay, we got Anne. Thank you, Anne. Good morning, Melissa and Hilda, Diana H, Gloria. I'm glad, I hope you're crafting along with me, Diana. That would be awesome. And Sue, Susan reported the spam and Janet too, thank you. We have lots of Dianes, Di another Diane. And Becky, Denise, thank you, Linda, for your comments. Oh, okay. I didn't know about that. Denise is saying, if I change the settings so that only subscribers can comment, 
Ha. Huh. Then I would block the spam bots. I had no idea. Okay, Denise T, thank you for that cool idea. But I don't I don't want to like keep other people from subscribing, but maybe it'll be easy. Maybe it'll encourage them to subscribe so that they can comment. You know what? I might just be able to do that, turn that on for my lives. Maybe I could turn it on for particular videos. I don't want to keep only other people from ever commenting, only if they're subscribers, because they, they sometimes have a hard time subscribing from their TV or something. But yes, I love that idea. Turn off comments for only subscribers. I had no idea I could do that. All these years I've been dealing with this. Well, I haven't been dealing with spam for that many years. See, she has to giggle when she sees my workspace. It totally started out with a completely blank area where I took a picture. And next thing you know, I can't find the cups. I can't find <laughs> Beverly's giggling when she sees my workspace. Hello, Fritz from Holland. All right. And she's writing in, would that be in Dutch? We'll have to do a translation later. Milk and lemon in your tea? What? How can you have milk and lemon in your tea? Doesn't it make it curdle? I guess you mean lemon sometimes in your tea or milk in another time? I can't imagine having milk and lemon at the same time, Susan. I don't even drink tea, sorry, so maybe iced tea once in a while. All right, Terry, thank you, Terry. Melissa, wow. It's like just trying to wade through the spam to see you guys is like crazy. All right, so just like to show you a couple of like things. So this one is something my upline made for me. It's not part of what I did in the series, but my upline Hattie. Thank you, Lara, for coming too. And Robin. Okay, Robin's also saying about the only subscriber comment. Okay, I'm going to try that right after this. I'm going to turn that on just to see how it affects my comments in general. And I'm just going to turn it on for my channel and see what happens. Okay, so anyway, she made this cute little box and she put a little doily behind it, which is awesome. And she gave me this little name tag. This was for an event. I didn't go to the actual event, but I did the virtual aspect of it. It was called a demo stamp and share. She used the scallop contour dies and made me a little name tag. So I still got my little name tag to put in my craft room, even though I didn't go to the event. Now they made little bag of lips in the event. We'll be making those either on my channel or in my bingo, making envelopes out of these bags. No, making, sorry, making bags out of the envelopes, which I've also done on my channel. All right, so part one and two, let's show you what we made in part one and two of the series. In part one of this cup of tea workshop series, we, we went over, oh boy, things are sticking in my box. We went over how to use the die sets itself. And I showed you the, the die sets and we did some stamping. And I showed you that I have a, a panel card that I make a lot of times using designer series paper. And you use a piece of card stock in the back for your card. Then you have a piece of card stock in the front of your card. And then you just put three panels of designer series paper. It's a great way of showing off designer series paper, using patterns, and also a great way of like having a solid piece in the middle that you can contrast with your teacup where you're not trying to put like gaudy paper. And I, I mean, let's face it, some of this paper is gaudy compared to, I mean, it's cute, but it's still gaudy if you put a teacup in front of it. It would make it like too busy and too hard to see. And so I try to put the planar pieces in the middle where the teacups are. Okay, so these are the cards we made in part one. We made two together and I had one already or two of them already created for you. So you can see that just by using the same exact pattern, you can come up with completely different looks. And we use Sweet Sorbet for stamping this and Starry Sky and Orchid Oasis. Well, Starry Sky, this was Orchid Oasis for the cup itself, but the Starry Sky was for the sentiments and Sweet Sorbet. Okay, so that's what we made in part one of the series. And in part two of the series, we created these projects here. We created diaper fold treat pouches little tea bags in there, green tea. You can give these out as random acts of kindness, right? A little fun to make. Thank you with the little teacup. I showed you how to use the blending brushes, ink around the edges. Okay, we did, here's one green tea again. Sweet sorbet for the flowers. We made nail file boxes. Let me put the nail files back in the boxes. We made, we made these also in part two. Okay. And those of you that took my scan and cut courses on, I'm sure it was either in the boxes and envelopes or it could have been in the winter projects course. I showed you how to make these with your machine. So you don't need to score the edges yourself, but we made these manually with the simply scored and just a paper trimmer. We made these cute little boxes for our nail files. 
and these tea holders. That was all in part two of the series. And as my team members send me some more samples, and as we get closer to the bingo, which I'm doing in July, I'm going to have a lot more cup of tea samples to show you from this suite because I'm not only doing a workshop series, but I'm also using this for a bingo event and where we use the cards and envelopes to create some projects with. So we'll have a lot more samples to share as this, as this series goes on. Thank you for watching. This is The Paper Chef. I appreciate you, your time today, and hope you crafted along with me. Thank you.